Hello and welcome to today's tidings. I'm your host, Joyce Tumia. Our topic today is music, and my guests are two wonderful musicians, up-and-coming singer-songwriter Danielle Ament on the left here, and guitar teacher, among other things, Joel Simpson. So who would like to start out by sharing some background information? One of you. Go ahead, Michelle. You start. Tell I'll us something go. about how you got involved in music. Well, I have been doing music my entire life. Um, when I was very little, I went to go see The Sound of Music with my mom, Aww. and I was like, Mommy, I want to do that when I grow up. Mm -hmm. So she enrolled me in some singing lessons, some acting classes, so I was involved in a lot of musical theater up until about eighth grade mm -hmm. when I started writing some music and everything, and then I got my first guitar, uh -huh. which was so exciting for me because mm -hmm. I could finally you know, play and sing with myself, and then I met Joel, mm -hmm. who has mm -hmm. been my guitar teacher ever since. Wonderful. So you had an acoustic guitar. Yes. Okay, and you probably teach? Yes, I teach oh. guitar and I do mm -hmm. vocal coaching too. Um, I studied uh, music business at Elmhurst College and I've been self-employed for 10 years and uh, I make my living producing music, r recording, uh, uh, performing and teaching. So Wonderful. And it's been really great to work with Danielle. Wonderful. Okay. So you've known each other quite a while then since you started playing guitar. Yes, since wow. eighth grade. So about okay. five years. Five now? years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's jump forward here a little bit and talk about where you are right now. And then we'll kind of go back explaining how you got to where you are. Okay. But I think it's important for people to know why you're a guest on the show today because you have really interesting experiences to share and some tips for other writers. Yes. Writers, singer songwriters, and so on. Okay. Well, right now, um, I just recently released my EP, Songs for You. Mm -hmm. Why don't you hold that up? Okay. And um, it came out in November, so it's been out for a little while, but you can get it on iTunes or on my website, daniellealment.com. And um, ooh. right now, actually, my songs are up on iHeartRadio.com, mm -hmm. which is, they are owned by Clear, and they own all like uh, 103.5 KISS FM, 93.9 The Light, so all the big radio stations. Mm -hmm. But they also have an on-demand radio online. Okay. And signed and unsigned artists and bands can put their music up and mm -hmm. have like a bio up there and everything. And right now, actually, um, two of my songs, All the Time, which I'm actually going to be performing for you today, uh -huh. um, and What You Mean to Me are in the top 20. Wow. Um, and All the Time is actually number 10, so it made top 10, which is really exciting. That is fantastic, okay. And you also go to Nashville pretty frequently? Yes, I go there probably once a month. Hmm. Okay, so between this success and starting taking guitar lessons, there's a lot to fill in there. <laughs> Um, yes. So you began with the guitar lessons. You already have, did. You take voice lessons anywhere? Yes, I've taken voice lessons for a very long time from several teachers. Okay, and you've got all the background on uh, not just teaching them how to play the instrument, but what to do with their talent if they want to perform and right, like go ahead. how to produce demos, how to submit their songs to publishers and record companies you know, how to uh, promote themselves, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And Danielle in particular, she had more of a classical background for mm -hmm. singing and then kind of had to bring her into the pop field a little bit more. And then um, also we started out by learning songs that she really liked, you know, uh -huh. like uh, popular artists that were ones that she liked a lot that were easy enough to learn. And we, we learned those first and then we gravitated toward writing songs because Danielle just has a really creative spirit and mm -hmm. is great at writing songs. So. And additionally, I mean, she has a super great support network as far mm -hmm. as family and friends and um, fellow musicians that play with her. So that really makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, her parents are committed to taking her to Nashville once a month or, you know, now, now she's wow. pretty much going on her own. But, you know, that's a lot of commitment from the parents to yeah. produce the demo, to, you know, to supporting her and, and getting her through the lows, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when there are those lows. And it's a lot of hard work. And so for that, I just have to say she's got a great support network. And it's, mm -hmm. she's smart to rely on that, yeah. too. So Wonderful. And it is very important. It's one thing to have talent, but you have to know what to do with it. Right? Yeah. So it's very important. It sounds like you make a very good team here. Yes, yes I think uh, we do. <laughs> okay. Now, as far as the songwriting goes, 
you just would get ideas or do you have a melody come first or how does that work for you? Because this is something that songwriters always seem to want to know. Yes, um, I always get asked this question. It's a great question actually because I love asking people the same thing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's really just, you know, a mix of mm -hmm. different techniques that I use. Sometimes I'll just sit down at the piano and a tune will come to me and I'll just start playing some chords here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, if something happens in my life, because I do take all of my, you know, my personal life and my friends' personal lives, and that's what Turn I, them into that's songs. how I get my songs. Kind of yeah. like Taylor Swift. Exactly. Right. 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 Okay. Um, or any good singer-songwriter. Yeah, most do. Mm -hmm. um, and I put my ideas down on paper, and usually it's just bullet points, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you have to get that rhythm going. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know, you've written some mm -hmm. songs yourself. Um, you have to get the rhythm going, you have to get a little bit of a rhyme there, mm -hmm. and then I think of a melody, and then when I when I didn't play guitar very well, I used <laughs> to um, go to Joel and sing the melody to him, and he would, mm -hmm. I don't know how he did it, I would it, decipher but he would what key it was in. Play yeah. the chord, and it was in the right key, right. And everything. Uh, I'd hear what she was singing. Mm -hmm. Because she had voice lessons, she would gravitate toward a key, or be mm -hmm. able to sing in a certain key. Yeah. Another thing about the songwriting, though, um, it's it's good to write it about your personal life, but you do have to approach it from the standpoint of being universal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think of Taylor Swift, and she wrote specific boys' names in her songs or whatever, and that, you know, is kind of not as general. Where you, mm -hmm. when you write your hooks, a lot of times it's something that somebody could listen to and apply to their own life. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's a pretty neat thing. And being able to play an instrument and and be able to lay out a shell of a, mm -hmm. a chord progression or something so that you can write the song really helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing that I'll say about Danielle in particular is she's really good at coming up with hooks. And I mean, as you know, that's one of the best ways to have your music discovered or be known. Okay. Just having that hook in there mm -hmm. where if somebody hears it once, they'll be able to go seek it out on the internet or on, you know, mm -hmm. look it up somehow. And so. we're going to hear one of your songs. Yes. Um, so people will know what we're talking about. Is mm -hmm. there a hook in this first song that we're going to hear? Yes, this okay. first one is called All the Time, mm -hmm. and I do say all the time a lot okay. in the you song. Say all That's the, time. the hook. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, wonderful. Then we're going to hear this, and then we'll come back and talk about it okay. a little more. Great. Just like the sign that's flashing in the night I think 
talk about you all the time. I am so impressed. That was fantastic. Was that easy? Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow, that was great. Boy, so you two are just wonderful. <laughs> Boy, Thank you. is there anything else you want to share about that particular song before we get back to talking about your career and tips for other singer, songwriter, guitar players? Um, uh, well, in what inspired you to write that song? Um, well, this song was actually co written with one of my producers. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just about. I wrote it about my friend's situation actually and she is together or was together with this guy and they broke up and he keeps wanting to like hang out with her and be together with her and she's like no I I don't really like you like that but then there's always that one thing she's always talking about him she compares every other guy to him yeah. so okay yeah interesting well that's universal mm -hmm. okay you know and Danielle she has a certain I've known, I've seen this in art, artists that I've seen become successful in that she has a determination about what she wants to hear or mm -hmm. she knows what kind of sound she's looking for. So sometimes that's a missing element with young songwriters is that they're kind of, you know, just floundering on what style they want or what they hear in their mind. So we could start with an acoustic guitar and a, a vocal or a piano and a vocal, but at the end of the day, Danielle knows, I want this to sound like, you know, mm -hmm. I want this mm -hmm. kind of sound in there, I want this drum beat, this these other auxiliary instruments and yeah. that's really been it's come to light in Danielle's mm -hmm. EP because producing with those producers in Nashville is, I could tell she's having fun with it yeah. but I, also owning it so yeah. and I always say my favorite part I love recording and I love being back mm -hmm. there and singing and everything but I love sitting down and watching my producers cut and paste everything and then add the sounds or like do you like the sound or oh. do you not like the sound and they'll send me so many different Versions. takes and versions mm -hmm. and everything and mm -hmm. I like being able to choose which sounds I like because okay. it is my song. So. Okay. And you talk about the things that she's learned to do songwriting. Mm -hmm. So not only has it been learning an instrument, learning how to sing, uh, being dedicated enough to commit time to doing all those things, mm -hmm. but then learning about the recording process, what mm -hmm. multi-track recording is, um, you know, why certain songs sound better than others and, mm -hmm. and making those determinations. And then also the business side of it, doing interviews, doing, you know, newspaper mm -hmm. interviews, it's magazine interviews. It's all great experience. It's, and we I'm should point so much. out the fact that you are only a senior in high school. Yes. You are still in high school. I am in high school. <laughs> yes. And your career so, is taking off. Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's really exciting. And it's nice to have all my friends there mm -hmm. behind me. They're all so supportive. They mm -hmm. all are ready to text 103.5 and be like, play Danielle's song mm -hmm. and, you know, they're the ones that got me on top 10 on mm -hmm. on-demand radio. So, okay, so that's I, a tip for other singer-songwriters. Yes. Get a fan base right off the bat, yes. other than relatives. You, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely the, the hardest media. part, too, is, you know, branching out of just friends and family. Mm -hmm. And being on on-demand radio and mm -hmm. iHeartRadio is really, really exciting because mm -hmm. it's really going to help other people who I don't see every day in school to hear mm -hmm. my music. So who were the major, I mean, we know that you really like Broadway mm -hmm. music, musicals, mm -hmm. but that's not really what you were writing. No. And yet you're also, even though you're going to Nashville, you're also not really writing country. No. Um, so when I tell people that I'm going to Nashville, most of them automatically think, oh, do you sing country? I'm like, no, um, I'm not even that much of a crossover country. Mm -hmm. I sing definitely pop rock okay. music, and I write pop rock music. Mm -hmm. um, and, and well, Nashville is a music hub. I mean, yes. So when you think about the different music industry hubs, New York, L.A., and Nashville mm -hmm. are your main centers for the United States. So really, Nashville is just the most approachable, I would say, for young artists because they're willing to open the doors to young artists where when you go to New York, it's a little more cutthroat uh -huh. and, and L.A. is a little bit too far spread apart. You know, mm -hmm. So it's, you really have to know what you're doing when you're going to 
LA or Hollywood or something like that. Yeah, so it's a great it's, networking city. They're very friendly people and they're open-minded and they do, in Nashville, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of music that's produced down there. Every major label has an office there. Every major publisher has an office there. Mm -hmm. So it's really a great city to be in. And plus, they have great barbecue. Okay. <laughs> so, and very quickly, we can also share your other experience locally, not just going to Nashville, but places mm -hmm. you've played here, yes. and how other upcoming performers can get bookings like that too, because that's something, mm -hmm. you know, before one gets to Nashville, you play locally. Right, right. So, um, well, I have played at Bally Doyle's here mm -hmm. in Donna's Grove. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing at Gatto's on the 29th. Okay, that'll um, be January after, yeah. that'll be before the show airs. Oh, okay. That's okay, people sure. can look up future yeah. performances. In the summer, we'll be playing at Ballet Doyle yeah, as we'll a feature Yeah, we'll be playing at Ballet again. So. Okay. Um, you played downtown at Abbey Pub. Yes, at the mm. Abbey Pub, which is... Okay, and how did you get these bookings? Is that something you helped with, or...? No, her my manager. mom. <laughs> call her the manager, mom. Okay. She is so much better than me at, you know, calling people and getting music out there and everything. She's great. I don't know. I would not be here without her. Mm -hmm. um, but she is very good at, you know, calling and saying, oh, um, this artist, Danielle Ament, she has her new EP out, mm -hmm. and um, she gets me bookings. She talks to the manager. She talks to the booking agents there. Okay. Um, but when I sang at the Abbey Pub mm -hmm. in Chicago, that was with Chick Singer Night Chicago, mm -hmm. and they actually have one in Nashville, too. Um, they have them all over the place. Okay. Um, but it was their 23rd annual anniversary, uh -huh. and they, um, there it was a group of us women. There mm -hmm. are five of us, and we each got up there and sang two or three of our songs, mm -hmm. and it was really a great experience because it's at the Abbey Pub, which is legendary. It's mm -hmm. really prestige. Um, and we got to be up on a higher stage. It was really cool and there are like balconies and everything and sounds very exciting it was very exciting so are there okay I don't want to really ask I mean I'm mm -hmm. curious about what favorite songs but um, we need to hear about the next song that you're going to sing yes tell my, us a little bit about that my next song is called Starlight okay and it can be taken so many ways but for me when I sing it I always sing it as about letting go of stress because mm -hmm. being a senior in high school there's so much stress there's the application process for, and college. for colleges there's mm -hmm. deciding on which college you want to go to mm -hmm. um, and the grades and everything and just outside stresses too in the world and it's just about letting go and closing your eyes and just living your life and enjoying the time that you have now okay and again, that sounds universal, whether yes. you're a senior in high school or it's your day-to-day -day job mm -hmm. or you're a mother at home with kids or whatever. Right. Okay, wonderful. Well, we are going to hear that next, so we'll be back in a few moments. Take a breath, say goodnight to everything that wasn't right trade it all for a beautiful sky and everything you had to know is sweeter when you let it go leave your heartache and your worries be Such a gift, such a beautiful Hurt you ever known? It's hard to try. 
trust, but are you willing to try? Look again, and you will see. Open up, it's a wonderful time. It's a gift, such a beautiful truly can see Oh my gosh, boy, I am really so impressed. You Thank are you. just, you're both incredible, but you've got such a beautiful voice. Thank you. And your lyrics are fantastic. Thank you so that much. It is wonderful. And of course, anyone who wants information on getting your actual CD mm -hmm. can do so by um, accessing, how, how can they do that quickly? Um, I have my website, danielalmont.com. Okay. I okay. also have a Twitter and a Facebook, okay. and you can go on iTunes. All of my songs are on iTunes. Okay. Wonderful. And we'll put that information in the credits as well. Great. Well, thank you both very much for coming and sharing this information. Thank I know you so the much for having speaking us. speaking time went very quickly, but we <laughs> had to get the songs in there. Yes. So thank you so much, and I wish you both well with your careers. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for watching. Please join me again for future episodes of Today's Tidings.